Let me start out with a slide that shows the two differ types of lamp sockets Ford used in the dash. On the left is the two-wire socket where the center and the base of the bulb are both brought out with separate wires. This type of socket is used for the early model Fords which use a single turn indicator lamp in the dash cluster. This type is also used for the oil pressure and generator warning lights. On the right is the single wire socket. This type of socket is used for the instrument panel lamps. On models that have the separate turn signal indicators or left and right, this socket is also used. Slide 1. On early model Fords, mostly prior to 1965, Ford used a pressure switch for the brake switch. This pressure switch was installed in a port off of the master cylinder in most cases. Alternately there may have been a T in the brake line for the switch. Later this was changed to a brake pedal mounted switch for safety concerns. The issue was that if a pressure switch failed due to leaking, the brakes would eventually fail when enough fluid leaked out. Slide 2. The wiring for Ford model switch used two turn signal indicator lamps in the instrument cluster as shown in this slide. Please consult your wiring diagrams, which can be found on the Internet, for your particular model. Many Ford model wiring diagrams can be found at oldcarmanualproject.com. The remainder of the slides in this video will use the single signal indicator lamp of the earlier Fords. Also the brake pedal mounted brake switch will be shown as opposed to the pressure switch. Vendors for early model Ford parts make a retrofit kit to eliminate the pressure switch and add the brake pedal mounted switch. This modification is highly recommended. Slide 3. Here we have a slide showing the system with the turn signal switch in the center position and the brake not applied. Notice the color codes are not intended to show the wire color, but rather the voltage state in the wire. This is to convey the operation for each state of the brake switch and the turn signal switch. You should consult your wiring diagrams for your particular model for the wire colors. Notice there is 12 volts connected to the brake switch. This connection is generally connected to a constant voltage providing the 12 volts whether the key switch is on or off. Notice also the 12 volts accessory circuit connected to the flasher. On most Ford cars the key must be in the accessory or the run position in order for the turn signals to work. This is to prevent the turn signals from operating while the vehicle is parked. Imagine coming to your vehicle the next day to find a dead battery because you forgot to center the turn signal switch. Also notice that the output of the flasher is shown solid red which indicates there would be 12 volts on this wire. This is because the flasher is a current operated device which requires current flowing through it for it to operate. Inside the flasher is a bimetallic operated contact much like the contact in the thermostat in your house. When current is flowing the bimetallic actuator will heat up and bend which in turn opens the contact which will stop the current flow through the flasher. With no current flow the bimetallic actuator cools down and the contact will again close allowing current to flow through the flasher once again. This process will repeat itself over and over causing the bulbs connected to the flasher to flash. A related note is when you switch all your signal bulbs to LEDs. The LEDs do not draw sufficient current to heat the bimetallic actuator in the flasher enough to open the contacts leaving the bulbs on steady. There is a solid state flasher to use with LED conversions available. Notice with the turn signal switch in the center position there is no electrical path for current to flow through the flasher. Slide 3.1 when troubleshooting the turn signal switch there is a connector at the bottom of the steering column that may be disconnected. Once this connector is disconnected, the turn signal switch can be continuity tested in each position of the turn signal switch. You can pause the video on this slide if you need time to study it. 
I will not repeat the explanation of the flasher operation on subsequent slides so keep this in mind. The colors shown are for Mustang or Falcon. Consult your vehicle's wiring diagram for wire colors. Slide 4. This slide shows the system with the turn signal switch in the center position and the brake applied. Notice the current path for the brake lights through the center position contacts. Notice also there is not a path for current through the flasher. Slide 5. This slide shows the system with the turn signal switch in the left turn position and the brake not applied. Notice we now have current flow through the flasher since there is now an electrical connection from the flasher connection to the left front and rear direction signal lamps and the turn signal indicator. Also notice the current flow direction through the turn signal indicator lamp is from the turn signal left front wire. Through the small signal indicator lamp and through the right front turn signal light. You may ask why both the signal indicator lamp on the dash and the right turn signal light don't light up since there is current through both lamps. The reason is the dash lamp is a small normally a number 1895 lamp that has only a 0.27 amp current draw, or about a quarter amp. The right turn signal light normally a number 1157 has a current draw of 2.25 amps. The small draw of the dash lamp is not enough to cause the right turn signal light to illuminate. The number 1157 bulb used for the front turn signal light's resistance is only about 5 ohms. So it being in series with the dash indicator lamp only causes a small decrease in the lamp brightness. Since the dash indicator lamp uses the opposite turn signal light for its ground, the turn indicator will only flash in one direction. For example if the right turn signal light is burned out, the dash indicator will only flash in the left position. Conversely, if the left turn signal light is burned out, the dash indicator will only flash in the right position. You can see how this could be pretty confusing if you did not realize the dash indicator relies on the front turn signal lights for its ground. Slide 6. This slide shows the system with the turn signal switch in the left turn position and the brake applied. Notice the current path for the brake lights through the left position contacts. Slide 7. This slide shows the system with the turn signal switch in the right turn position and the brake not applied. Notice the current paths from the flasher to the front right turn signal light as well as the rear front right turn signal light. Also notice the current flow through the dash turn signal indicator is reversed from when the turn signal switch was in the left position. This is why switching the bulb for the dash turn signal indicator to a LED only allows the bulb to flash in one direction only. LEDs are light emitting diodes which like all diodes, current will flow in one direction only. If you want the dash turn signal indicator to be an LED, some rewiring of the socket will be required. I will show a slide for this modification at the end of this video. Slide 8. This slide shows the system with the turn signal switch in the right turn position and the brake applied. Notice the current path for the brake lights through the right position contacts. Slide 9. This slide shows the modification that can be made to allow an LED be used in the dash turn signal indicator. Cut the two wires going into the dash turn signal indicator socket. Leave enough wire on the socket for soldering. Add some wire suggest black, soldered onto the wire connected to the base of the bulb socket. Cover with shrink tube. Use an ohmmeter to determine which wire is connected to the base. The other end of this wire connect to a ground. Solder a 1N4001 diode to each of the wires that was connected to the socket. The end knot bandage should be used. Next slip about an inch of shrink tubing over each wire and diode and shrink with the tubes about halfway over the diodes. Now add a larger shrink tube over both diodes pushed up for soldering the banded ends of the diodes without the heat causing the shrink tube to shrink. 
The banded end of the diodes should be connected together and soldered to the other wire connected to the socket. Finally slide the larger shrink tube down over the diodes and solder connection and shrink it. There may be some variation to the way turn signals are wired on your particular vehicle, especially Lincolns and Thunderbirds. For example, the 1964 Thunderbird has separate contacts in the turn signal switch for the fender-mounted turn signal indicators. And the 1965 and up Thunderbirds which have the sequential turn signals are totally different. Hopefully this video will help in troubleshooting problems you may have with your turn signals.